Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland and this is going to go on my British Poesy channel. Um, I've already read uh, To the Nile by John Keats and indeed To the Nile by Percy Bysshe Shelley. So the third one of the poets who um, composed a sonnet, I believe on the same evening, on the very same topic was Lee Hunt. And now I'm going to read the poem by him and you can compare them and decide which one you think was the best. The Nile by Lee Hunt It flows through old hushed Egypt and its sands Like some grave mighty thought threading a dream And times and things as in that vision seem Keeping along it their eternal stands Caves, pillars, pyramids and shepherd bands that roamed through the young world, the glory extreme of high Sesostris and that southern beam, the laughing queen that caught the world's great hands. Then comes a mightier silence, stern and strong, as of a world left empty of its throng. And the void weighs on us, and then we wake and hear the fruitful stream lapsing along twixt villages and think how we shall take our own calm journey on, for human sake. So that's the poem. So now you're going to hear my penny's worth, and I always give you a penny's worth. So it's obviously the Nile when it says, it flows through old hushed Egypt and its sands. Why is Egypt quiet? I'm not sure. And yes, it does have a lot of sand on either side of the Nile. Uh, so it's fertile just on either bank, but a little further away, it's, it's desert. Like some grave, mighty thought thrilling a dream. I thought, wow, what an incredible um, uh, simile. But uh, his, uh, dreams do flow like a river, I suppose. Is it maybe because it seems surreal in some way, say, parched to have such a plentiful, plentiful supply of water and times and things as in that vision seem, keeping along it their eternal stands. Um, so the, the, t the times and things, as in that vision that's referring back to the dream, I suppose, seem keeping along at their eternal stands. And then I think the stands refers to what's coming along. Caves, pill pillars, pyramids and shepherd bands. Well, you will find all of those thing things, especially in the Valley of the King. It, kings, uh, it really makes you want to revisit Egypt. I haven't been since I was six. And as you may, may have guessed, that's over a year ago. Um, that roamed uh, through the young world. Okay, so when the world was young, these shepherds were, were, were wandering around, and shepherdesses, I don't doubt, because that's one of the cradles of civilization. Obviously, not too far from where man began, the Rift Valley, going due north. And the Rift Valley is near the Nile, just follow up towards the sea, or down towards the sea, rather, and you get to Egypt. Uh, the glory extreme of High Sesostris. Now, excuse my ignorance, I don't know who Sesostris is. And that southern beam, the beam is a ray of light, or what else can it be? Moonlight, sunlight, and the laughing queen that caught the world's great hands. I'm not sure who the laughing queen is, and what are the world's great hands? I I'm puzzled, so um, forgive me for not able to shed much light on it. There comes a mightier silence, stern and strong. What? what? Mightier than what, this silence? Anyway, as of a world left empty of its throng. So imagine there was nobody in the world. Well, the, the silence would indeed be sepulchral. And the void weighs on us. Okay, this emptiness, all right, with bearing down on us. And then we wake and hear a fruitful stream lapsing along. So as though we, the reader, we're lapsing in, we, we readers, we're lapsing into a dream and then awakening once again. Um, and then we hear the sound of the stream and sometimes you do wake up to one. So isn't it odd the way this the, the, this dream metaphor has wended its way through the dream, uh, through through the poem and so on? And then we're waking from it to hear the river again. All right, so these are all very in-jammed, these, these uh, ideas. Twixt villages, as in that's between villages, and think how we shall take our own calm journey for human sake. Okay, so we're going to go on a journey for, I don't know what, what's why it's calm. But it could be calm, all right, on a river or not. And it's very soothing and therapeutic to look out onto water for human sake. Not sure why we're taking the journey for human sake, for our own sake. Well, I suppose that is human sake. OK, um, I don't quite comprehend it, but there we go. That's it by Lee Hunt. Which one of the three do you think was the best? Answers on a postcard. Toodaloo.